Hi, I'm Steve from Boat Test Reports and welcome to episode number 28 of our show. This week, we're sponsored by Cruisers Yachts, which is celebrating its 67th anniversary this year. First, we'll start with the latest boating news. New boat sales continued their blistering pace in August, a time when most dealers usually experience a slowdown. According to Info-Link, an industry tracker, just under 100,000 new boats were sold so far this year, which is a 43% increase compared to August of 2019. The National Marine Manufacturers Association said that all powerboat segments have recovered from the pandemic-related losses and expect that 2020 will end with an annual boat sales increase reaching a 13-year high. Looking at some of the highlights for August, personal watercraft sales were up 2%, pontoon boats experienced a 9% increase, and freshwater fishing boats were up 10% year-to-date. Sales of saltwater fishing boats, wake sport towboats, and yachts showed record growth ranging from 11% to 15%, and new outboard engine sales were up 15% compared to the same time last year. On the technology front, Monte Carlo Yachts became the first motor yacht builder to install Raymarine's assisted docking system, DockSense Alert. The buyer of an MCY-76 Sky Lounge requested that the system be installed on his new boat. It uses object recognition and motion sensing devices to help give a captain better situational awareness when navigating tight confines. Raymarine and Monte Carlo developed a five camera system that uses audio and visual alerts to tell the captain when the yacht is close to objects such as a dock or pier. DockSense Alert is integrated into the Raymarine Axiom XL multifunction displays at the MY76 Sky Lounge's helm. Check out this video of the system in action when Raymarine introduced DockSense Alert at the 2019 IBEX trade show. So they can very precisely measure the distance to the dock. They can also gauge the height of objects. So notice the different color coding we've got in here. Anything that's in aqua blue is within a half a meter of the surface of the water, so that's our float. And anything that's green, yellow, orange, or red uh, is higher than a half a meter. So we're seeing the railings on the gangway over there. Uh, we're also seeing the concrete pilings and some of the other light structures on the dock. Now we have an alert zone of three feet set up alongside the boat. And you can see most of our port side has gone into red alert because we're within three feet of the dock. So we're maneuvering in this slip here and we're gonna make a 90 degree turn to starboard. And as the camera turns, you'll see the edge of the slip here coming into view. And up here on our overhead view, you can also see it'll begin to image the dock if we make our turn. We've gone to an orange, which is kind of an advisory alert. So we're a little bit farther off the dock. So as we get closer again, it'll change from orange to red. Anytime we want to enlarge the picture and just get a closer look at what's going on, just a swipe of your finger, uh, we'll pull it open. And with a swipe, I can send it back. You can also get a full screen view of the dock sense alert display. So DockSense Alert is coming out this year from FLIR and Raymarine. So watch for more information on it on raymarine.com. Thanks for checking it out. Hurricane has introduced a new stern drive powered deck boat, the Sundeck Sport 205 IO. She's a 10 passenger, 20 foot long boat that the manufacturer says is designed to maximize the on-water experiences ranging from water sports to fishing and cruising. Lounges in the cockpit and bow provide a range of seating options when underway. When at rest, there are two aft-facing seats at the stern. A two-level swim platform should provide wakeboarders and skiers with a stable spot for staging, and there's a reboarding ladder to starboard in a dedicated locker. There's also a beach reboarding ladder at the bow. Power options range from a 200 horsepower 4.5 liter V6 with an alpha drive to a 250 horsepower engine with a twin Bravo 3 drive. If your boat has a small seat base that allows the seat to wobble or is difficult to slide fore and aft, then we have a new aftermarket fix for you. Atwood Marine has introduced a new Latitude Series seat base. It's a modular platform that the company says is more durable and requires less force to move fore and aft or swivel. The Pro Base has one of the largest diameters to provide a solid foundation with less wobble. It also has familiar bolt patterns for installation. Take a look at this video and see what we mean. Atwood Marine is proud to introduce the Latitude Series, the first all-in-one cross-application platform with electric rise, slide, and swivel action. The Latitude Series is engineered to be a universal install and is the only true modular seat platform with mechanized adjustability. 
select and combine the parts you need for your boat to form up to 20 different configurations. No matter your application, Latitude Series is versatile enough to accommodate your preferred configuration. The platform's universal multi-tier aesthetic also provides consistent styling and easy assembly throughout the entire family of Latitude products. With the touch of a fingertip, the driver is able to control the height of the seat for full visibility. Latitude features a patented riser mechanism designed to minimize wobble and reduce free play. Made of cast anodized aluminum, Latitude Series is proven to withstand saltwater corrosion by two times the industry standard. Lavorsa Marine's new QRM series controls are designed to work with Mercury's fly-by-wire digital throttle and shift. They can be set up to run a single engine with two levers or up to six engines with four levers and shadow mode. They also have shorter throttle levers and low-profile trim switches that are more comfortable to operate. They can also be matched to steering wheels from companies including Carlotta and Gussie. Our first boat will be the Riviera Belize 66, which has amazing handling and a boutique level of fit and finish. This one offers two operating stations, one down below and the other one in this sky bridge. This upper operating station has a lot to like. This is equipped with joystick steering so I can control the boat from this relaxed position. And speaking of comfort, look at these seats. They're from Celto. The helm seat is electrically controlled, up, down, fore and aft, and recline. The platform comes out 5 feet 8 inches from the transom. It's hydraulically actuated, so we can use it as a private beach or launch a tender from the garage just ahead. I like how the galley is centrally located between the two main deck social areas, the aft cockpit and the forward salon, and we can further blend the two together by opening up this large window. Now let's go from a multi-million dollar Modiat to a boat more of us can afford, the newly designed 236 Mako Center console fishing boat. She's been completely redesigned from the hull up. Now let's take a look at the helm, a 9-inch Garmin display, two Smartcraft displays, and the digital throttle and shift. Something that's standard on this boat that I really like, the C-Zone switching system. The hardtop is optional, standard is a canvas T-top. The helm seat is double wide, includes flip-up bolsters, and underneath a flip-down footrest. And look at this, four rod holders at the back of the post, five at the trailing edge with two more to the outsides. In both corners of the transom, 22 gallon live wells. There's a new day boat style that's becoming popular in Europe, which features a plumb bow and an open transom. And now a division of Mastercraft is building this concept in the US. Take a quick look at the Aviara 36. When it came time to put the hammer down, she went from 0 to 20 in 5.1 seconds, 30 in 6.9 seconds, and 40 came and went in 10.5 seconds. Plane was reached at 3600 RPM in 4.2 seconds while moving 25 miles per hour. The port companion seat converts to an aft facing chaise. The main seating area is configured in an L shape. The gourmet galley is a must aboard the AV36 we feel. It comes in a one or two grill option. Aviara combined aesthetics with a functional design when considering the reinforced aluminum hardtop with the AV36. And we have to say the overall ergonomics had us feeling as if we were driving a familiar automobile rather than an unfamiliar boat. The Canty is 60, boasts everything you could ever dream in a yacht. Dine al fresco while seated at this comfortable lounge. The table has two positions, high for dining and cocktails, and in the low position transitions into a large sun lounge. With the starboard salon door and powered port side window fully open, this single level platform transforms into a luxuriously appointed entertainment terrace. Elevated dual helm bolster seats and panoramic view allow for excellent visibility at all cruising speeds. The master and VIP staterooms are filled with designer fabrics. Both have large, comfortable mattresses and real wood dressers, cleanly fit and finished with privacy doors and custom trim. The master comes standard with powered blinds. A third stateroom provides additional accommodations with bunk beds that convert to a double berth. Cruisers has created a unique private cabana that's perfect for relaxing or entertaining in the sun without getting too much sun. The Canty is 60, is a marvel on the water and a dream at the dock. There's only one thing left to do, C 
sea trawler for yourself. Now for another question from the captain's exam, here's an interesting one. A person found operating a vessel while intoxicated is liable for all of the following except A, imprisonment for up to one year, B, a fine of not more than $5,000, C, seizure of his vessel and forfeiture of the title, or D, a civil penalty of not more than $1,000. Well, did you select B because you think the fine is too steep? Well, you'd be wrong. The correct answer is D, the civil penalty of $1,000 won't apply, but everything else will, so you really need to ask yourself, is it worth it? Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks to our sponsor, Cruisers Yachts, and as always, if you like the show, sign up for our daily newsletter, and please keep the photos and videos along with the comments coming. For Boat Test Reports, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.